professional judges disagree in the close 10-9 round. Therefore, you can have it one way or the other. And as I told the fighters, you know, this, thing, this thing's going to be close. It's your responsibility to make that an easy 10-9 round so that, it, you know, if you leave it in the judges' hands, it's in the judges' hands. Absolutely. And you can't blame them when it's over. And that needs to be explained to the audience that, you know, in a fight like this where these rounds are close, it can be controversial, and it's not controversial. It's just the way, you know, different judges see a different round, and they are at different angles. And you know something, 95, 96, 97 percent of the time, the judges get it right anyway. Absolutely. And you see constantly Mayol stalking, stalking Calderon, trying to find the range, but you can just see how tough it is. Great anticipation by the part of Calderon. That's probably his greatest trait, that great anticipation of seeing that punch coming. Well, Mayol is, finally he landed a right hand in there, but you know, the scoring too for the judges is on effective aggressiveness. Yeah. And, and while Mayol is, is very aggressive, you know, Look at the amount of times he misses. There's three since I started that sentence. And folks, that takes a lot of energy out of a fighter to miss cleanly that way. You know, he's throwing the last six or seven punches he hasn't landed. So that's, the, you know, it's, it's fine to be aggressive. Then seven, eight, nine, so, and then he's tied up. So there he threw nine punches and nothing landed. That's Calderon's defense. We finally got him to the body. And on the inside, Cabon warns me he was hanging on. And that goes down to the old thing, protect yourself at all times. And that's the instructions. And you know, if it's there, take a shot at it. Look at Calderon, oh, brilliant slick. defense. And you talk about strong legs. That takes some real strong legs to be able to do that. You know, and this is why some people compare this guy with uh, Benito Lopez. I think offensively, Lopez you know, showed a little bit more than Calderon, but defensively, it's hard to see anybody any better than him. And a low shot. Is he warning? I don't think he, he, is he gonna warn him? Yeah. Uh, there wasn't a warning. No, there was no it. warning, no. Uh, he finally loaded up the left hand, which is a power shot for the southpaw, but it fell a little bit short, but it showed Chris right hand on the inside. And Calderon, if he's winning these rounds on the judges' scorecard, it's only by a punch or two because the other guy just can't land anything. But then look at the expression right now. You look at the expression on the face of Mayol. He looks like a frustrated fighter right now. He is frustrated. You have to be when you throw that many punches and you can't land. And he's tightening up, too. He's tightening up and getting very, very frustrated. And he got a jab through that time, and finally he landed a punch. Right down the pipe went Calderon. But it was the left hand. Usually the, the right-handed fighter, you know, fighting the southpaw wants to throw the right hand down the middle, but he finally got his left through. I don't know. I don't. I can't give that to Mayo. I'm and, giving it to Calderon also. And, I, and I'm looking for a reason to give it to him. Well, we got three in the books. We think that uh, Calderon has uh, won all three of the first rounds, but they're very, very close rounds. And in the case of at least one of the rounds, there was only one punch that we could even score. There you see in the corner right there, Jose Sanchez has been with Ivan Calderon for 16 years, all the way to the amateur. Also in that in that ring with him, Felix Pagan Pintor. 60 world championship fights he's now working. But he, he uh, Jose Sanchez has worked with all of the top Puerto Rican champions. We mentioned some of them like Juan Laporte, Edwin Rosario, and Wilfredo Gomez and Wilfred Benitez. And the there you feet. see, look at the footwork, look at the footwork, stepping on each other, trying to come inside. There's the footwork. There it is, stepping on it right there. That's one of the difficulties. And again, great job right there by camera people to show you that, how hard it is to fight between a southpaw and a right-handed fighter and the constant battle between the feet to get outside of the other bird, the other opponent's feet. Our producer tonight is Sammy Colazzo, and our coordinating producer is Nelson Swegler. And everybody in that truck doing a great job catching these things that Benny and I are talking about to show you folks uh, watching at home just what's going on in this fight. Mayo finally lands a couple of shots, and he's happy about that. Gets his right hand through to the southpaw. But see how tough it is to land combinations at Calderon because you extend yourself to land that one, and then he's not there anymore. You don't land combinations with this guy. That's but why. a question now here, though, Colonel, he's 34 years of age. When does all of a sudden the reflexes start slowing down? Well, you know, you measure the age of a prize fighter not so much chronolog uh, chronologically as you do by how many difficult fights. And when you don't get hit, you don't age. 
Well, he was very defensive about that about his age. He said, I'm actually 24. <laughs> That's what he said to us. So he considers himself at least 10 years younger. And you know something? While he's not 24, he's not a 34-year-old boxer either because he just doesn't get hit that much. But then there's another thing called experience, and that's a great thing about him right now. He's there. He knows all about it, you know, that anticipation, and is able to go ahead and pick apart the things his opponent is doing and turn it to his favor. Calderon in the gold, Mayol in the white, with the red and blue trim. Frustrated by the fact he can't catch up with Calderon. On very few occasions, he comes in there, Calderon knows exactly how to defend himself. He bends at the waist, lets the right hand come up over his shoulder. Well, that's when you know these fighters are small, when the referee can actually cover both of them from certain angles. It's a very technical fight to this point. That's why you don't hear the crowd going bonkers here in, in Puerto Rico because they're a knowledgeable crowd. And while you know, ordinarily, if you see a technical fight like this in other places, you might hear a little hissing and booing. But they know how technical Calderon is, and they're very entertained by it because they're educated boxing fans. Well, it's like watching a mongoose and a cobra. The mongoose being right there, Ivan Calderon, the cobra, waiting to strike Rodel Mayo. Jab, jab. You know, I, I talked about the great defense of Calderon. Another guy is fighting in a another couple of weeks that actually next week uh, Floyd Mayweather I mean he's one of the great defensive fighters that I've ever seen too and you put Calderon on that same page as you talked about you know a terrific fighter here and two guys also that never let themselves get out of shape you know what may all might have might have got this round if there's any round that you would give him what do you think no do you still you're still I'm gonna give me all that round because I don't know if Calderon did enough I, I didn't think he missed as much as he did in the previous round but I just don't think he's doing anything. Look at, look at Calderon. He's totally... Coming in. This one's coming in. And they're trying to get him to throw combinations. And again, you can't throw combinations on a guy you can't see. You got to look pop right down here. Aim at his belt line, they said, okay? Aim right there because he's going to dip. I'll put a question mark by the fourth round. I'm just trying to look for something that he's done a little bit more than the other rounds that you could, you could give him a round along the way here. You have to be quick on that one, okay? Well, Freddie Roach gets his fighters in great, great shape, so we know Mayol is in great, great shape for this fight. You can either here or fucking right Tremendous here, physical okay? condition. It's interesting on the part of the, the Mayol, though. He comes to the United States. He fights twice. He fights against uh, Ulises Salini, Adrian Hernandez, some of the action right here. There's a good left hand, so maybe. Maybe he should have gotten that round. Well, because it was, you know, it was one hard blow that landed. And I mean, if you're going to give Calderon the first round because he landed one blow, you got to reward Mayol, at least in my opinion. But, you know, that's <laughs> that's what makes this fight very, very tough to judge. Calderon decked out in the gold trunks. Mayol from the Philippines in the white has come here in the Calderon's backyard to try and lift this title. Stepping on that gas, trying to get there first, like his plan was at the beginning of the fight. The heads came together again, and luckily it's not around the eyes that the heads are coming together. It's up in the, you know, in the, in the temporal area and in the and in the skull that the heads are seem to be bouncing off each other. Nobody's got it around the eyes yet. I got to see the fight against Casares, and it was amazing how much bigger Casares looked than Calderon. They all look so much bigger than him. Well, he's five feet tall. Pascualito Perez, another great flyweight, also five feet tall. Slick and, and oh man, look at the step. He steps to his left and back to his right. And again, is there a frustration?